Hello, welcome to Booking Through Life. I'm Mary, and it's mid-January already. Can you believe it? <laughs> this month is just flying by, and so far I've only finished four books. And so we're going to talk about them today. Um, I am have been participating in two book, um, one book challenge and one readathon. Uh, the readathon is called the Past and Present. Readathon. It's hosted by uh, Alice at Alice in the Giant Bookshelf, Jack at Spread Book Joy, Jim of Gem of Books, and Emily at Novel Novels. And so, three of the books that I read are fall under uh, th that readathon, and then there's the 2023 uh, Read Your Bookshelf Challenge hosted by um, Chantel at Chantel Reads All Day. That's just one book a month. And so um, I, I finished that prompt for, for this month. So let's talk books. <laughs> okay, so the first book I read, but as I said, I'm going to talk about the um, past and future readathon. So the first book I read was God Merchant Park by Jill Hornby. Gorgeous cover. The um, the embroidery artist is. Let me look here. My book journal is Chloe um, Giordana, and you can look her up. I'll link her um, information um, down um, in my description box. She does beautiful work. And you can get cards um, that are that are like um, have the picture of her work on them. Anyway, that's beside the point. So God Merchant Park. This was for the prompt um, book you're most anticipating. It was a future prompt, and uh, I got this book for Christmas. I got I wanted the UK edition. I live in the United States, but this edition as I said, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm sure this book will make it on my best book covers for 2023 because it is yummy. Anyway, so I love this book. I gave it four stars um, just to tell you a little bit about it with hopefully uh, without giving any spoilers. Uh, this book is about um, Anne Sharp. She was friend to Jane Austen and governess to Jane Austen's uh, niece, Fanny Austin, and this book is uh, fictionalized, but it's based on uh, true, true people who lived in the eight, early 1800s, and uh, Jill Hornby used uh, Fanny Austin's journals to get a good idea of what happened and how um, Anne Sharp interacted with the family during the two years that she was a governess. Uh, for the Austin family. Um, other than that, the, we do know some of Anne Sharp's history after she left the Austins, but nothing is really known about her, about her kind of her origin story. So Jill Hornby um, definitely fictionalized that portion. And what she did was she researched um, governesses of that time and kind of um, took a composite of, of what a, a stereotypical governess might be and, um, and fabricated a story from that. And so there's a few different um, interesting storylines, story threads happening throughout the book. So one is um, what it's like to be a governess in this time and how, um, how and why, sorry, my um, phone is dinging, how and why Anne Sharp became a governess, um, and then how that role plays out, especially as she looked at the different tiers in a, a family estate being the family itself, then the governess, and then below the governess was the servants. And so a governess really didn't have a true um, a space, a true place of belonging inside a home and how that could be really lonely, isolating, and, and, and welling up a lot of feelings of insecurity. And we see that in Anne Sharp in this story. Um, we also follow the storyline of what's going on with Anne Sharp's father. He disappears after Anne Sharp's 
um, mother passed away and Anne doesn't know exactly where he is. That is totally fictionalized. Um, this The book is um, 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 divided into four, sorry, divided into four acts. The first two acts, we see um, Henry Austin coming and visiting God Merchant Park quite frequently, and he really interacts with the females <laughs> of, of the estate and what goes on as he interacts with them and how Anne responds to that, what she thinks about Henry and how her um, relationship, her friendship with Henry develops over the time that she's there. And then um, in the second half, we have Jane, Cassandra, and Mrs. Austin coming on scene, visiting God Merchant Park. And then we see how Jane and Anne become friends and we follow that friendship a bit and and follow some of the trials and tribulations that Anne has. Anyway, it's a really quiet um, slice of life book. It just encompasses the two years, I may have said that already, um, that, that Anne was a governess at God Merchant Park. If you are a Jane Austen lover, if you are a Bronte lover, um, a historical fiction lover, I really think that you would like this book. It's very interesting. Very, very good book. So then, um, uh, the the third book I read uh, was a, fr from the prompt from a prompt from past and future readathon, and that was read um, a favorite author, and I picked Ellen Montgomery and I read Anne of the Island. I really enjoyed all the Ellen Montgomery reading I did last year. I had started um, reading the Anna Green Gable series and I just got through the first two and so I was ready to pick up the third uh, novel and um, and so I read Anne of the Island. That's that's book three and I gave this three and a half stars. Um, this is kind of a you know a cozy type book too. There are some uh, some serious things do happen in this book um, but this book chronicles four years of Anne's time at Redmond College. And she kind of bounces back and forth from Redmond College to Avonlea in the winter and the summer break. So you have kind of two sets of cast of characters. You have the Avonlea characters, which everybody's back. And then you have some new characters um, at Redmond College. So um, Prissy Grant and Anne go together to Redmond College they um, start off boarding um, at a boarding house together. Gilbert and Charlie Sloan go as well, and so there's a little bit of interaction there. Uh, Prissy and Anne meet another freshman in college, and her name is uh, Pris or Philippa Gordon, and they call her Phil. And Philippa Gordon's kind of a, a flaky, <laughs> quirky character, and uh, she claims that she has a hard time making de decisions, so she always wants somebody to make decisions for her. She's um, taking this kind of break to go to college before she gets married. She's, uh, she knows she needs to marry a rich man. Um, all of the men or the young young men in her uh, social circles, she's kind of weeded them out and she's come down to two, Alex and Alonzo. And we never really, if I remember correctly, we never really um, meet them in person. They're always, they're in her hometown and so we're always, she's always talking about them. And it's always Alex and Alonzo, Alex and Alonzo. So it's kind of like they're one character, which I thought was interesting because it, I felt like it represented the way um, uh, Philippa felt um, like she couldn't make a decision which one. And, they, and so they, it was almost like in her mind they're one and she can't quite separate them and, and choose one. So one of the storylines we follow is what happens with with um, Phil and her decision on which which boy she's going to pick. <laughs> uh, for Anne, uh, we she has a few engagement or a few proposals, and we see her response to the proposals, and then she does some. There are some things that happen between um, her and Gilbert, and they um, begin to kind of work out what their relationship is looking like. And there's it's definitely a roller coaster. <laughs> Um, and then so, and then we have all the all the characters in Avonlea, Marilla and Rachel Lind, uh, Ruby Gillis um, has a, a big part in the Avonlea. She has a little storyline um, goes on with her. 
um, Diana and her fiance Fred. Uh, they'll some things happen with them. Davy and Dora are still in there and some other um, uh, friends of hers show up. There's also some new people that show up. Um, new people whom I do not think that they're going to be um, people who continue to show up. So that was the only thing that was frustrating to me is that we had what I kind of felt like short stories within the story um, of different people or, or couple and their their courtship and that didn't really have anything to do with Anne's time in, in Redmond College and didn't really propel the storyline um, any farther unless it was just um, Anne was seeing different different relationships as she was kind of wrestling through what she felt about marriage and proposals and whatnot. So that's why I gave it three and a half stars, but still good. I still recommend it. It's still not as good as the first one, Anne of Green Gables. But Ellen Montgomery, keep trying. <laughs> anyway, so that was that one. The fourth book that I read, and it was the third book for the past and future challenge that I did, um, was read a book that brought you back to your youth or was youthful, reminded you of your youth. Um, I, I picked um, Enola Holmes, the graphic novels. I did not read these. They did not exist when I was a youth. I'm an old lady now, <laughs> um, a mature lady. Uh, but I have read all of the Enola Holmes series and I've watched the two movies. I really love the series. I was very excited about the graphic novels. The, um, the illustrations are fabulous. I absolutely love the illustrations. Five stars on that. They have um, excerpts from Enola's secret notebook where she takes notes and draws pictures of, of cases that she's on. But I'll just see if I can pull out this book. So here's, here's one of the Enola Holmes books. This graphic novel is three of the Enola Holmes books, the first three. And so my problem with this was um, and why I gave it two stars is that it was just way too condensed. And I didn't think that uh, the storyline was as easy to follow as it is in the books. So I was really disappointed on that. So, yeah. Um, I've kind of heard that there's a, a different um, uh, graphic novel that the artwork looks more like the actress and Enola Holmes and Henry Cavill who plays Sherlock and that those are a little bit better. So maybe I'll try, I try those, but I don't think I'm going to read any more of, of that particular set. So then the final book, which was actually the second book I read, <laughs> if we're going in chronological order, was The Hollywood Spy by Susan Elia McNeil. And this was for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge of 2023, um, hosted by Chantel Reads All Day, Loves Books, Reads All Day, and she loves books, but her, her handle is Chantel Reads All Day. And the prompt was, read a book with A or the in the title, The Hollywood Spy. And so I picked this one. I picked this one because this has been on my, I keep, putting this on my TBR <laughs> list and I hadn't gotten to it. And um, it's the uh, current uh, latest uh, book for the Ma in the Maggie Hope series. Um, Susan Elia McNeil will have a book out in June. And so I'll be looking forward to that. So I, I needed to get this one finished. So I'd be ready for, for the next one when it comes. And so Maggie Hope is a spy. She's been um, spying for um, Winston Churchill for the British government. She has kind of been on a little bit of a, a break or she stepped away because some things happened and she needed to, um, she had some PTSD she needed to deal with. And so she's feeling a little bit better. And her ex-fiance, Flight Commander John Sterling, uh, calls her up and says, hey, can you come over to Hollywood where he was He's now uh, living and working with Disney, making some um, films, short films, um, to promote and to to promote the war and to promote because it's World War II and to um, encourage people um, during the wartime. And so 
his fiance, his current fiance, is found dead. And they believe that she, it was an accidental death, that she hit her head and she fell in the pool and drowned. And so he says, Maggie, can you, can you come over and check this out? Because I, I think there's something else going on. She was in the midst of a bitter divorce. What was she doing being engaged to somebody while she's in the midst of a divorce? I do not know, but that's her business. And now she's dead. So, um, so Maggie comes and she fairly quickly discovers that it was foul play. Um, she was drowned before she was thrown into the pool. Gloria was drowned before she fell into the pool. And so Maggie's on the case <laughs> and she's pretty sure she can figure out what's going on. And so, um, yeah, there a lot happens in this book. Um, Susan, Elia, you can tell how fascinated she became with this uh, period in time because she has like in the back, she has five, six or six-ish, six-ish pages of source material that you can look up if you're interested in reading more about this time. And her, um, acknowledgement and oh her note from the author i actually liked the note from the author probably better than i liked the book uh, but i did give the book three and a half stars it is a good book i do recommend reading it especially if you've been reading these this series then you know that that what you're getting into with this this series but there's also you can tell in the book that she's she's really fascinated with the 1940s hollywood scene her husband i guess had worked on the Muppets, um, the Muppets at the Hollywood Bowl. And he saw a book called Hitler in, in Los Angeles and he brought it home for, for, for her to read and she was really engrossed with it. So she does a lot of name, Hollywood name dropping and uh, place dropping in this book. Um, and here are some themes that you will, or not some themes, some elements in the book that you will encounter. So there is a KKK element, there's um, gay and lesbian scene in Hollywood element. There's, of course, since there's KKK, there's racism. There's a little bit of terrorism. Um, you do have the World War II, you have Hollywood and the film industry, and you have Zoot Suit riots as well. So <laughs> there's quite a bit is going on in this, in this book. Um, but in the midst of all of that, there's a murder mystery. <laughs> And so there's also a murder mystery and there's also something that's um, brewing and you, you'll you find out more about that later. <laughs> anyway, three and a half stars. So yeah, pick it up, read it. It's good. Read the series. It's, it's a decent series. It's just, if you're looking for a little bit of romance, that's what you get. A little bit of romance. I think Maggie Hope's a little um, constipated in the romance department, but that's just my opinion. So anyway, maybe that's not even your thing, so it doesn't it doesn't matter to you. Um, so that's it. That's my TBR, not my TBR. That's my wrap up for Jan mid January. So I'll see you again soon. I'll see you again at the end of the month for another wrap up, and but I'll see you again before that. I have my around the world in 80 days partial TBR that I'm I will I will be filming and showing and who knows what else is around the corner so i hope, hope i get to see you again soon please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books what you thought about them um if you've read maggie hope what do you think about it I'd, I'd really be interested to hear feel free to like and subscribe and until next time i hope every book is a good book and i'll see you again soon goodbye